Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I've got three stories for you in this very latest Moon Lambo hot, 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 hot jam, including this one. Yes, another XRP killer. Here's the headline from Finance Feeds. XRP. Ripple competitor Baton Systems could soon take the lead. <gasps> well, I'm very scared right now. I got my money in XRP. I'm kind of on XRP doing a ripple thing. I think being worth more in the future. I don't know. Yeah, so how many times in a year do we have stories like this? What's the latest XRP killer? Like, it's just, it's constant. And every time I go through and I'm like, okay, tell me about the latest XRP killer. It's the same crap time and again. None of the quote-unquote ripple killers or XRP killers uh, utilize a decentralized cryptocurrency uh, to facilitate uh, cross-border transactions as a bridge currency. None of them do. Some of them do have a coin, and it's just some sort of centralized coin that's representative of uh, an underlying fiat currency. And so what, 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 what problem are you solving there? I mean, look... You're creating a, you're creating another wall garden, and and so for the participants, okay, sure, but it's just a closed network. You're not solving a global problem. Ripple is the only one going to market the way that they are and seeking to utilize a technologically sufficient decentralized cryptocurrency that has an open market price to solve the train wreck that is the world of global cross border payments and settlements. And it's the only solution that humans have devised to this point. Also, unfortunately, a second within the last week, a second cryptocurrency exchange in Canada has chosen to delist XRP. So I want to talk about that well as well. And I also have a very short update from attorney John Deaton. Some of you may be aware that uh, he's he's going to be in um, a little documentary, a mini documentary. There's a film crew that's going around recording, and so they recorded him and some others within the community. So I'll, I'll catch you up to speed on that. But before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of a kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So under this first piece, again titled, XRP, Ripple Competitor Baton Systems Could Soon Take the Lead. For a long time, Ripple has garnered much attention within the crypto space for its FX settlement capabilities using its blockchain technology and network. Enthusiasm grew widely because XRP, the first and most popular digital asset to live on the XRP ledger, trades on the crypto exchanges and many investors have exposure to it, skin in the game. But Ripple, with solutions powered by XRP, is not the only player in the FX settlement town using blockchain technology. Among the firm's leading competitors is Baton Systems, which was founded as Ubixi in 2016. I'm going to take a little bit of dispute with that claim. This is a leading competitor against Ripple. I've never even heard of these 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 individuals. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Baton Systems. This is news to me. But but again, like I said in the intro of the video, they are not doing the same thing that is Ripple. They're trying to create a closed network. And check this out. This is interesting too. The latest news is that Baton Systems' core FX solution powered the world's first interbank payment payment settlement uh, outside of CLS. The core FX solution was built on Baton's proprietary distributed ledger technology and is governed by the Baton rulebook. No associated digital asset can be found on the cryptocurrency market though. And so there you go. There is no decentralized cryptocurrency. If they are using some sort of coin to move stuff around, and that's actually unclear at this point, it may just be... Uh, I, I don't know. It, 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 to be honest with you, it sounds like a damn database. Uh, nothing against databases, but don't don't make it out like this is something that's competing with how uh, Ripple's position in XRP is a bridge currency, because this is not the same thing. Most certainly not. Um, so there there is no cryptocurrency associated with it. So how does this work? Well, look. What, what they're doing, it's what every other competitor is doing, including JP Morgan. They're creating their own little walled gardens. But you, you're not going to have interoperability from one closed system to the next closed system. So this, it, it's a futile effort. It's, it's a closed effort. Maybe they get some sort of traction for certain corners of the world. But here's the thing. There's over 11,000 financial institutions, including banks on the planet. Over 11,000. Are you going to, as your own little walled garden, uh, get all of them inside your walled garden? No, you're not going to. You're not going to have a global solution. But if you look at the way Ripple's going to market, positioning XRP as a bridge currency, well, first of all, there's no centralized authority as it pertains specifically to XRP. Uh, there is a company, Ripple, which is centralized because what the hell is a decentralized company? That don't make no damn sense. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a company, Ripple, 
but like, the degree to which you're allevi- alleviating the concerns having to do with trust are rather substantial. Because the way that money moves around the planet, this specifically the settlement portion, not the messaging, but the actual settlement portion, it, re- it requires pre-funding of accounts, which means that that requires trust. You can eliminate just about all of that trust. You don't need to trust other entities if you're talking, because who do you need to trust, really? If you're utilizing XRP as a bridge currency, uh, okay, an exchange in one country and then the other country, how many countries are there? You know, well, depending on who you ask, it's a little less than 200 or a little more than 200 because not all, all countries um, even acknowledge the existence of all other countries. So it depends on who you ask, to be honest with you. But say about 200. Okay, so what's more realistic? You know, having trust with one exchange in each country so that you have sufficient liquidity. It's like, because that's, that's what it would take. You need an exchange as, as basically a pool of liquidity. So what, what's more realistic? Trusting at least one exchange in every country in the world so that money can move around. Or building your own little walled garden where you have to trust over 11,000 financial institutions and banks. What seems, a little, what seems more realistic? <laughs> and again, specifically here, the reason, and the reason that this works is, is because there's not a central, centralized authority that um, has, has power over the actual, the part that's, that's value. So in the case of like JP Morgan with their, their little JP Morgan coin, it's just representative of fiat currency. And, and, and so like, if you're a part of that network, you've got to trust that that's not going to go belly up. You got to trust that that's not going to, and, and maybe it probably won't. Okay, fine, but that <laughs> it 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 it's not something that's a global solution. You're not going to get everybody inside of your little walled garden. And then they wrapped up this article by stating the following, and I think they really missed the mark on this. It is possible that the banking industry might prefer using Baton's blockchain solutions than working with Ripple, a firm at the heart of the cryptocurrency industry, because it could implicitly further legitimize cryptos, stablecoins, and central bank digital currencies, which are seen by bankers as a threat. Look, I don't think any bank (laughs) that's worth a damn actually views uh, cryptocurrencies as something that's going to destroy them. I I really don't. I say, why? Well, first of all, there's always going to be a need for banks. Like, even think about um, lending. Where are you going to go to, to get a loan if you're starting a business or whatever the hell your reason is that for, for needing a loan? Uh, how about banks? They're going to exist even if just because that doesn't mean the landscape can't shift. I mean, yeah, there's talk of like decentralized loans. I don't even know how the hell that's going to work out. Who is approving that if it's decentralized? I, I don't know. Because blockchains, decentralized blockchains are not sentient. So I don't know where that decision is coming from. There's risk associated with that. But even so, I'm just saying that loans from banks aren't going away. Also, if, if cryptocurrencies are broadly adopted, I'm telling you, a, a huge quantity of people are not going to want to self-custody. They're going to want to, to, to keep their cryptocurrency at banks. That's the direction that we're heading. Banks aren't going away, folks. And so if you're talking specifically about XRP being used as a bridge currency uh, to, to uh, speed up transactions of money from one country to another, from one fiat currency to the next, uh, uh, reducing costs, you, you're telling me banks aren't going to want that? I don't believe that for a second. You'd have to be a really terrible bank to not want to offer your customers a better experience at a lower price. It's just not happening. And so, no, uh, we, we can place this whole article in the Moon Lambo wood chipper because it, this is uh, an XRP killer. This is not just to be super duper clear. And there are so many reasons. Those are some just off the top of my head. All right. Now, uh, into the next topic. Uh, you hate to see it. This story. So I've got one from today, but this, this first one here is from December 7th this year, 2021. From CoinGape, top Canadian crypto exchange delists XRP amid ongoing regulatory concerns. And here you can see, yet another cryptocurrency exchange has delisted XRP in lieu of regulatory and legal controversy surrounding the token. The Canadian crypto exchange platform Newton declared the news via a community release noting that they will be delisting two tokens, XRP and USDT. Furthermore, Newton Exchange highlighted that the delisting will be uh, process will be carried out in phase, and they go on to cite that it's on the screen. I don't want to read it, uh, but basically <laughs> they, they go on to cite that uh, they're going to be liquidating your holdings if you don't do it yourself, and then they'll just give you the cash equivalent of it. So, and so why is this happening? Uh, strangely enough, because and I, I mean I think it's strange anyway. It's because the SEC is going after Ripple. So, in Canada. Uh, per the way that their regulatory system is set up, they 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 need to consider 
um, international regulatory body. So in this case, the SEC going after Ripple in the United States means that they have to pay attention to that and they're responding in kind, even though it's been almost an entire freaking year since this happened. And so now here's yet another uh, Canadian cryptocurrency exchange. This is the story from today, uh, d December 13th. XRP to be delisted by yet another Canadian exchange. Canadian cryptocurrency exchange Bitbuy has announced that it's going to delist XRP, the seventh largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, on January 13th, 2022. The exchange allows users to trade the token against the Canadian dollar and Bitcoin. In January, XRP CAD and XRP BTC markets will both be removed from the trading platform. Bitbuy is urging users to withdraw any remaining tokens from the exchange before the delisting takes place. It adds that XRP will be replaced with other unnamed cryptocurrencies. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's really disgusting to see all this. And I'm not, I'll, I'll be clear, I'm not even mad at the exchanges. They're, like, they're doing their best to look out for, for their business. I wish that they had the, uh, the coconuts to like stand by uh, what makes, makes logical sense, but they don't have the coconuts to do that. They're, uh, <sighs> I still don't blame. I still don't blame. I, 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 I like exchanges like, for instance, Uphold in the United States that says, no, the SEC is wrong. And until XRP is officially declared security, we're going to allow the trading of, of XRP. Uh, that's a bold move. But I still don't blame the exchanges themselves that uh, not even in Canada that are just doing their best to make sure that they don't get sued because they're looking out for their business, their livelihoods, their their employees, their employees well-being career-wise. They've got families too. Like there's a lot at stake here. And so it's the SEC that I blame for all of this while admiring the few that do have the coconuts to stand up for what is right. That That's all that I'm saying there. But I'm not mad at the exchanges that are put in a position where it's like, well, we could get sued into oblivion and lose our business. And harm, which would harm, again, their employees and their families. So I, I get it. I, I do understand it here. But they, they go on to cite the, the following here. In early December, Bitbuy obtained approval from the Ontario Securities Commission to operate as a fully registered dealer, becoming the first crypto trading platform in Canada to achieve such a feat. In its most recent announcement, the exchange states that it has to follow the, S the OSC's guidelines to decide whether or not a certain cryptocurrency can be classified as a security. Bitbuy says that it has to take into account the opinion of international regulators. The exchange doesn't rule out that XRP might be relisted on the platform if the uh, regulatory environment changes. And here's a quote. We will continue to monitor the status of XRP, and should things change, we will act accordingly. Uh, and so I, I still think, look, I think justice is going to be done ultimately. Uh, there's just, the SEC could not be more... Uh, incorrect in their assessment of the situation. And I, like, like I said before, I don't even think that they believe most of the crap that they're, they're alleging. I really don't. I, I seriously don't. And so then you can get into the speculation as to why they're doing what they're doing. But I just, it's so illogical, so irrational, so out of line with reality. There's no way that they believe what the things that they're saying they believe here. Uh, now take a look at this. I thought this was kind of cool from attorney John Deaton. So he's, um, he's going to be in a little mini documentary here. And uh, so are some others from the community that you may know, including uh, Thinking Crypto, Tony from Th Thinking Crypto, uh, Ben Armstrong, BitBoy Crypto. And, uh, and so John Deaton shared the following on Twitter. After speaking to Thinking Crypto, so that's Tony, and, uh, and SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce, and spending the day at the law firm with XRP holders, the TV crew is on its way to BitBoy Crypto. They met my pig and my duck and took a pic of one of my favorite possessions, which came from an amazing decentralized community. So that was cool. I didn't know that he owned bacon in that way. He owns live bacon. That's incredible. Didn't know that. And a duck. <laughs> That's a fun fact. That's a fun John Deaton fact. Did not know. Uh, but he shared this image here and it's um, it's a little, uh, it looks like, what do you call it? Just an old award, acknowledgement, whatever you want to call it. I think it's cool looking though. You can see it's got the XRP logo and then the uh, text reads as follows on, on this. Decentralized attorney of the XRP community, John E. Deaton. Cool stuff here. And so again, it's, it's from what he wrote here, uh, the, the XRP holders and the TV crew, they were at, uh, at his law firm at his office. And then there was this picture that was shared by MXRP, uh, which was retweeted by John Deaton. And so you can see, I'm, so if I understood correctly, I guess this is a shot from uh, from his law firm. And then he wrote, met with some XRP holders today and nothing has changed. Great people, great community. It's ironic how a decentralized community can be more united 
than a centralized one. Isn't that the truth? Which is what I've been saying for the longest damn time. The XRP community is the best community in all of crypto, and there isn't even a close second. That's my personal, my humble opinion. Uh, also, I want to uh, shout this out again. Attorney John Deaton is going to be on the podcast of Patrick Bet David, who is a, a fairly famous individual, has had lots of sit-downs with uh, household names, and John Deaton is going to be on this podcast live this Wednesday the 15th. And so I just want to give a shout out if you just type in PBD podcast, uh, it'll pop right on up and you can check it out. And so here's what John Deaton uh, tweeted out this afternoon. XRP holders have often asked me what, if anything, they could do to help the cause. Patrick Bet David has graciously invited me to appear on his popular podcast live on Wednesday to discuss the XRP slash Ripple case. Tune in and show how important this is. And so I just wanted to give a shout out. I mentioned it in uh, my previous two videos as well. So I uh, just kind of trying to spread the word. And I'll go ahead and wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.